Hi guys, welcome to Cloud Sprint. In last two videos, we have covered how to create a GCP free tier account and configure billing. Second video was a console walkthrough where we learned that how to use various GCP services. Today we are going to cover how to configure GCP organization, create folder structure and projects as per our needs. In here, whenever you go to a company or when you start a cloud migration, Every company has their own domain. For this example, we have a domain booked with godaddy.com, which is cloudsprint.in. We will be working with this domain for all our labs. The second thing which we're going to talk about is Google Workspace Admin. Google Workspace Admin helps us to configure cloud identity, create our users, create our groups for our corporate, for our enterprise users. We can provide permissions to use GCP. You can attach cloud ID to org and GCP. The third thing will, the second part of the lab is all about setting up folders and projects. Wherein we will learn that how to set up an organization, how to create folders, how to divide that in environments and how are we going to create projects. That the last layer, which is resources. So we'll be discussing this in detail on uh, doing the lab as well. Before we move to the next segment, let's understand how GCP org looks like. So organization is the first resource which represents your company. Any IAM role granted at this level are inherited by all resources under the organization. Second is the folder level. Folders can contain projects, other folders or a combination of both. Roles granted at the highest Folder level will be inherited by projects and other folders that are contained in the parent folder. For example, if you apply any permission on DevOps folder, it will be applied to both the folders dev and production and all the projects within these two folders because policies are inherited from top to bottom. The third layer is the project level. Project represents a trust boundary within your company and it is logical separation of resources. The fourth is resource layer, which is the minimum level of the permissions. That's the so far a decent enough uh, enterprise level start, which we're going to do in our labs. Now, without any further delay, let's try to create our organization, set up users, folders, structure, project label and resource level. See you in the labs. Bye bye. For this, you need to click on IM identity and organization here you can clearly see that you can manage your user accounts groups for employees you can create organizational structure which is centrally controlled you can create projects resources you can configure security guidelines we'll click on go to the checklist when you come here to the checklist you'll see that your current account cloud sprint 31 at gmail.com is not associated with any organization now if you want to have a, your own domain and attach this google cloud projects with your, your organization, you need to enable cloud identity and create the organization. So without any further delay, we'll begin the setup. Once you click on begin the setup, you'll be redirected to this page where you'll be asked that what kind of workspace user are you? The first step is, are you a new customer? Are you a workspace customer? Or you already have a cloud identity? Since we don't have anything, we will say I am a new customer. After that, I'll click on the sign up for cloud identity because the VS, we are just registering for the first time. In this window, it will just ask you some basic details like your business name, your country, your email address, and your domain. As we have already booked domain with GoDaddy, we'll copy and paste it here. Yeah, we'll use the domain. We'll put out the username which we want to show in the, the admin. So here we are creating the admin user, pushkar at cloudsprint.in. Educating the user is fine. We'll submit the capture. After submitting the capture, our cloud entity account has been created. Once you log in from this account, you will be asked to accept the terms and conditions. Once you accept the terms and conditions, you will be thrown to the admin console, which is a place where you control all users, groups, identity, domain, ownership, everything. Now, the second step is to verify your cloudsprint.in. 
we have created the cloud identity now we are going to verify the domain you have to ask you have to sign in into godaddy.com but since i have already signed in another window it will not ask me so i'm just going to click on connect and that will verify my ownership that yes i am the owner of this domain that that basically takes four to five minutes to verify yeah after five minutes it got verified now my domain is verified now on the screen you can see it is verified by cloud identity it is satisfied that i am the owner of this domain the second step is to create new users this do, this admin panel helps you to create users in bulk you can make any kind of changes you can create groups for now let's create a test user test.user at the cloud sprint.in we have added that user you will be getting the username password or an email address of that particular user if you want to see you go to directory users and you can see you have the user created you can also create group because while working on gcp we will be only working with groups it's not a best practice to give you know the rights to an individual this is how we can create groups we can also assign owners like we in, for now in our organization we have two users pushkar and another one is test users so both of them either of them can be owner of it or both of them maybe that's how you create groups in here right so as now we have created cloud identity so for now we have created cloud identity our admin account and a test user now we have to log in from that particular account which is our organization admin to move further because that's that's that was the point of creating that identity now i'll click on continue and i'll switch account so far we were log, logging in through our gmail id but now we will change it to pushkar added cloud sprint dot in that is our cloud identity which we have created i'll click on select it will redirect ask me to enter my password once i enter my password ideally it should take me to console.cloud.google.com but you see it is throwing me an error that i do not have access to google cloud to resolve this problem you have to go to your admin panel go to apps additional google services and you need to check that your google cloud platform is on or off in my case it was off i turned it on again i'm going back after turning this on i'm going to switch my account i'll select pushkar at the red cloud spin dot in and here and see that i am again welcome by google cloud that welcome pushkar sharan that's your project now yeah here you can see that organization is created and i'm granted the organization admin role that's the first part of the lab which is created and completed now we are no more part of a no organization place we are part of cloud sprint organization yeah no organization we'll just refresh it and see if our organization setup is completed or not i'll again go back to home page yes now you can see our cloud sprint dot in organization is set up completely fine that's that's how you set up the organization in these three to four steps which we just followed you can follow in your project and do it now the second part we will go ahead with of creating folders and creating projects for that i need to add more permissions because you need to be a folder admin to create folders for at the organization level and you need to be owner of the organization to make any changes in the projects so quickly i'm going to give those two permissions i give folder admin i am giving owner note one thing i'm giving it on the cloud sprint dot in that is at the org level so all new projects will by default have these permissions for this user which is pushkar at the red cloud sprint dot in now in here the structure which we discussed i'm going to create some folders 
So the idea is to create data science folder, DevOps folder, and within that we'll have dev and production folders. Within dev, we'll have dev project. Within production, we'll have production projects. So that's how quickly you can create the folders. So I'm creating dev data science. If it is created the wrong place, you can select and move it to the right folder as well. That is also possible. So uh, in here, I created data science dev. I'm going to create one more. You can also select play with the location. For now, let's select here and create a data science folder, which is data science dev. Yeah, we are creating project now. Created a project. This project is being created. This project is created. Let's refresh and check if it is created successfully. Yes, the project is created, but at the wrong location. So what we'll do, we'll select the project and move it to the right bucket. Yeah. Now dev has the data science dot dash dev project. I'm going to click, click again when I create a folder of production. Now follow the location. You can also select the folder. Like now we want to create it under data science. We'll select location as data science. You create it, this production folder automatically is created under data science. So you don't have to move anything. We'll create another project. The location will be production. We'll say the project name is data science dash production. This project ID is very uh, important because while working with Terraform, you'll be needing it. So, and if you want to change it, this is the time to change it because this cannot be changed later on once it is created. So far, we have created data science folder, two folders within that and uh, two projects within that. There's suppose another team, which is DevOps team, and they also want to have the same structure. And why do we se segregate these folders? These folders are segregated for a better I am permissions. You want to give more privilege on dev development environment, less on production. If you do it like this through Terraform, it's very, very easy to uh, manage those permissions and you can follow ter Terraform completely infrastructure as code uh, lifecycle, which we will cover a uh, later part of this course. Yeah. So uh, again, we have created dev and production folders for DevOps team as well. Let's quickly create two projects for them and move it to the right buckets. So in here again, I'm selecting DevOps location without moving. I don't have to move it. Now. I'll say DevOps dev, create it, create project, DevOps prod, create it in the DevOps and within the production location. Yeah, project creation takes some time, a minute maybe. Yeah, let's reload the page and find out if the structure which we wanted is done or not. Our DevOps projects were not at the right location. So we're just moving it to the right buckets. Yes, so that is our complete uh, desired situation where we wanted to be. And we just wanted to create an organization. We created it. We created data science and DevOps folders. We created environments as dev production for both the uh, teams, we created projects within them. Resources, which we will be creating in the later part of the section. When, when we cover all other services, we will be creating resources during those labs. Yep. That's, that's how you create your uh, resources. You create your projects, you create your folders, and you manage your IAM roles and permissions. One thing I want to highlight is that uh, uh, we have created this test user. But you didn't see that in the organization I am. Why? Because we didn't give that permission specifically. We can say, okay, let's test it. Yeah, you can see it is detected itself, which means the sync is working perfectly fine. You can give a viewer role. The test user can come and view your resources, whatever you have created in the Google Cloud. That's pretty fine. And you have a view your user and you have pushka.cloud sprint as all administrator accounts you can change projects by clicking on the projects you cannot have access on all the projects depending on which team he belongs to you will have that kind of group and you will have that kind of uh, permissions that that we will cover in the 
IAM section in the next video most probably. You cannot edit the role because it is coming from the organization level. That's what we discussed in the earlier part of this video that policies follow top to bottom. If something is added on the uh, org level, it will be inherited in all the projects. When you select the project, this so you need to create a shortcut because every time it's it's difficult to you know uh, browse through your project. For that, GCP gives you a feature called start. You can star your projects, which marks as star as your projects, whichever you want to work on daily basis. So that's how it will come under start. That will help you to reduce your time and you can quickly go to your projects. That's how you change your projects. Again, coming back to the identity and organization. So we have completed our two steps, which first was mandatory. We, we set up our identity, verified domain and created the organization. We mapped our colleagues test user Pushkares. Uh, at cloud sprint uh, dot in to google cloud now these things will be doing one by one in the next videos subscribe hope you like the video thanks for watching bye bye